my group have been interested in um, analyzing time series for quite some time now. And we, I got talking to Emily and we thought about how we could use some of the techniques that we've developed for understanding um, the dynamics of uh, patients with bipolar. So the first piece of work we did was a couple of years ago, it was published in uh, Proc B, um, looked at just very simple descriptive uh, approaches to these time series. How can we understand, how can we characterize these uh, dynamics with very simple time series uh, statistics? This paper now that's in, uh, just coming out in Interface is, uh, was taking that a little bit step further and thinking about how can we apply uh, more mechanistic understanding to these time series. So what we've, take, what we've done is we've developed a, a set of oscillators, uh, they're called relaxation oscillators, and we, we're trying to think about how we can uh, apply those, those oscillators to the time series. How good do they fit? How good do they describe the, uh, the dynamics of very noisy uh, time series data, uh, which we get with this, with these, with, from, from this, uh, from this uh, database. So relaxation oscillators are a sort of class of mathematical models. Um, they're very, they're very interesting models in that um, you spend. So they're called relaxation oscillators because oscillators go up and down, right? So you go from high state to low state. Mm -hmm. And a relaxation oscillator is say, well, you're, and, and, and this is why they may apply to uh, bipolar cases that you spend a long time in one state. So you spend yeah. a long time in a say a low a low state, and then you'd relax very quickly to a high state. And then you spend a long time in the high state, and you relax very quickly to the uh, low state again. So it means they're really nice descriptor, and they've been well worked. Uh, they've been well known, particularly in electronics, uh, for understanding uh, oscillations in circuits. And with we we've just taken the, uh, that that those that mathematical formulation and and adap adapted it for um, this. Um, for applying to this, this particular uh, study. The idea with this paper was to take these relaxation oscillators and couple them with noise. So thinking about how do we not only understand the deterministic oscillations, but also the variability around those oscillations. So the, the paper sort of analyzes is in two parts, if you like. The first part is analyzing the re relaxation oscillators and thinking how you couple them together and when will they be uh, showing particular types of dynamics and how then do they get affected by uh, noise. And the second part of the paper is taking that and developing a statistical framework for thinking about how we can then fit those, those oscillator models with noise to the time series data. There are two main conclusions. One is that we can use these oscillators to understand uh, patients with bipolar, and it tells us that they are essentially independent, so they're not necessarily coupled. So those two, those two oscillators, or n, a number of oscillators, are acting independently. The second thing it tells us is when we do this comparison between average, so our, our mood maths and our mood model takes account of, as I said, average, average mood, and os, mood due, and variation in mood due to oscillations. It turns out that uh, in a lot of the cases that um, average mood is as important, if not, and sometimes more important than the oscillators. The oscillators have to be there, but it's just the average mood, the variation in the mood is also very, is very important. So knowing, so just knowing that this, so as a target for treatment, just h highlighting the fact that um, this inter-episodic mood variability is, vari is varying is really important, and it becomes then a really important approach for thinking about how to develop treatment interventions, psychological treatment interventions for this sort of this sort of uh, this sort of condition. In general, so across about 19 of these patients, um, their dynamics are characterized by independent oscillators. And that gives us some indication of the sorts of things that may be going off in the brain. It's not explicit, it's very phenomenological, it's very broad, but it gives us some indication of thinking about how we step down from a very descriptive approach to this mood profile down into the mechanisms about, well actually, yeah, there's, os these, there's oscillations going on that drive dynamics. And the next thing is to think, move down to uh, thinking about what happens at the neuron level and the firing patterns in, the, in, in your brain to think about, well, how do we, how do we characterize that? So that's the next step. A really exciting challenge is can we develop these sorts of populations of neurons that interact in this way and cascade them back up and say, well, actually, now we've got a population of neurons that feed into 
uh, relaxation oscillators that feed into a uh, mood profile. So building out this hierarchy uh, is, is really cool. So going up and down it essentially, mm -hmm. which will be really nice, mm -hmm. really exciting. In the case of the paper that's coming out in Interface, we highlight the, the, the importance of being able to consider the, the ensemble. So both average mood and the fact that it may be affected by oscillators in our case. But emphasising the fact and highlighting the fact that subsyndromal variability in mood is as important as a target for treatment as mm. the episodes of depression and mania is really, really important. And that, I think, is the, you know, the, the if there was ever to be a real world application, that is just raising that yeah. as a, as a, as a, as a, point of uh, focus for uh, people to think about when they are uh, uh, treating bipolar patients. The next bit of work that we're, we're working on is to think about how do we uh, build these sorts of neuron firing pattern models, mm. these neuron firing models. So we've got populations of neurons that interact in different ways and they could be coupled in different ways and thinking, well, how does that cascade up to affecting what happens at, a, uh, uh, at the relaxation oscillator level to drive uh, mood dynamics? So that's very theoretical at the minute. That will be just developing the, the mathematical approaches and the analysis to understand the sort of dynamics of saying, well, what happens down here in our hierarchy and to understand what happens at the top.